Okay, so this is simplifying a summer difference of higher radical expressions. So again, the same thing as we were doing before. Whenever you have higher exponent, higher indexes, you do have to do the prime factorization method. So this is actually that, which is nine twos there. So it's two to the ninth and then x to the tenth. Plus, this 3 is just kind of on the outside. And then 4 and 162. I know I've done that earlier in another module. You get 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So it's 2 to the 1 times 3 to the 4th times x to the 10. So, remember, each of the bases on the inside have to get written on the outside and on the inside. You just need to do the division method to figure out the exponents. So 4 goes into 9 um, two times with one left over. 4 goes into 10 two times with two left over. This 3 is just a multiplier, so it's just going to stay there as is. But when I'm trying to simplify my radical, all three of these bases need to be on the outside, but then they also need to be on the inside and my job is to figure out what the exponents are with the division method, okay? So four goes into one zero times with the one still left over inside. Four goes into four one time with zero left over. And four goes into 10 um, times with two left over. So in the end, I end up here with four x squared and the fourth root of two x squared. Here, that's not really there, that's not really there. I end up with three times three, which is nine, my x squared, and then a two times x squared. So again, this matches, which makes these guys like terms. So all I'm doing is combining their coefficients, the four plus the nine. So I have 13 of these terms. And that's the answer there. So now we're doing multiplication. So we've done the addition and subtraction, which I think is harder than multiplication, but that's the first thing they start us off with. Um, but now we're gonna go ahead and go into multiplication. So they sometimes they use an X, but I like to use a dot just because the little cross might look like a variable X and there's no variables in this particular problem. Okay, so we just have to remember our rules. As long as the numbers inside are positive, or real numbers, um, you can use this rule as long as these numbers inside are positive, okay? So since 50 and 32 are both positive, I can combine that. This is like a four times, and then if I multiply those two things together, I can actually multiply 50 times 32, and I get 1600. Then I can actually do the square root of 1600. The calculator tells me it's 40. And the four on the outside times that 40 is going to give me, I believe, 160. So that's the end of this problem because there's no variables in it, right? Now here I can apply that same thing. Remember your variables always represent positive numbers. So this is a positive, that's a positive, the inside is positive. Similarly for this inside, which means I can use my rule and multiply it together. So I get 18 z to the 10th. Remember, when you multiply, you add the, the bases. Then I am doing the square root, so I can um, use my calculator a little bit. So square root of 18, I can take care of. Three comes out, a two stays in. The variable I can't put in the calculator. So I have to put the z's on the outside, z's on the inside. An imaginary 2 goes into 10 um, four times with one left over. So this becomes 3z to the fourth square root of 2z. So we're still using our simplification methods. Um, we're just multiplying things first before we start trying to simplify them. So here we go. Um, with a few more. So same thing as before, we're going to multiply these together. So that and that is 50. We have V3 plus 7 is 10. 8 plus 3 
for the W is going to be 11. Square root of 50, I can do in my calculus. I get 5 on the outside. Oops, I need to leave some space for my letters. And a 2 on the inside. For my variables, I need to do the division method. So a 2 goes into 10 4 times with 2 left over. 2 goes into 11 4 times. Oh no, 5 times. Oh, I am so totally mistaken. I think I made a mistake. Yes, I did make a mistake. Over here, I made a mistake, right? 2 goes into 10 5 times with 0 left over. So that isn't really there. So there's no Z's on the inside, but the exponent on the outside should be 5. Glad we caught that there. Let's make sure we do it correctly on this other problem. So uh, starting over, we did the square root of 50, 5 and 2. 2 goes into 10 5 times with 0 left over. 2 goes into 11 five times with one left over. So this guy is not really there. We have 5 v to the fifth, w to the fifth, and then square root of 2 w. Same thing here. As long as my indexes are the same, I can multiply what's on the inside. So I get 21. And then 21 in primes is just 3 times 7. So nothing's going to come out. It's just basically going back to the original. So this is completely finished. Here, this one may not be. So if I multiply those, 20 times 6 is 120. And that's a pretty big number. That might actually be able to be um, simplified. So this is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So that means 2 to the 3rd times 3 to the 1 times 5 to the 1. So 2, 3, 5. 2, 3, 5. 3 goes into 3 once with none left over. 3 goes into 1 0 times with the 1 still left over. And then 3 goes into 1 0 times with the 1 left over. So these guys are not really there. You have 2 on the outside. And 3 times 5 is 15 on the inside. So that one did need to be simplified. It's just for 21, it's only 3 times 7, which means you would have 3 to the 1 times 7 to the 1. And if you did the whole process just by default, right? 5 goes into 3 0 times and with 1 left over. 5 goes into 7 0 times with 1 left over, which means you don't have anything on the outside. And you still have 3 times 7 on the inside, which is 5, fifth root of 21. So this was really too small in order for anything to come out. Okay. But this one had a bunch of 2's in it, so it was possible that some stuff could have come out. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing, but with distributing. So you're basically turning these problems that we've already done for multiplication and making it a little bit more complex. So you multiply this term. The way I think of it is when you multiply, you multiply the outsides together and the insides together. So 6 times 1 is 6, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 25. Then I'm going to bring down my minus and go on to the next term. Again, outside with outside is 6, inside with inside is 70. And then I need to simplify these square roots. So 6 times... So 25 is just 5 minus 6 times and the square root of 70 is just the square root of 70. That one doesn't simplify. So I end up with 30 minus 6 square root of 70. Now you cannot combine these, right? These are not like terms. This is a constant. Well, they both technically are constants. But this is a constant that does not have a radical. And this constant does have a radical. So they are not like terms at all, okay? You cannot do 30 minus 6 and say the answer is 24 square root of 70. That would be incorrect, okay? They both have to have the radical in order to combine those coefficients, okay? 
If one has a radical and the other doesn't, or if they have two different things in their radicals, you cannot combine them together, okay? So this is the final answer there. And so what I'm referring to is if you end up with something like this, right? These are still not like terms because the radicals don't match. So if that's what you ended up with, that would be your final answer, okay? But if you do have where they both have the same square root, then you could combine them and then you would get 24 of these square root of 70s, okay? So that's a little bit different. Pay attention to whether they all have the roots or not and if those roots are exactly the same. That's what will make it a like term, okay? Um, so let's keep going here. So now we have... Um, we have more distributing. This is more like FOIL, right? So you take this guy and distribute it to this and this. So key thing, outsides with outsides, insides with insides. Two times one is two. There's nothing on the inside here, so it's just gonna stay square root of six. Here, here, two times three is six. Square root of six times square root of 10 is square root of 60. Negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times this. There's Four times three, well, negative four times three is negative 12. Nothing inside the radical. So we're just gonna keep the square root of 10. Now square root of 60, I do believe simplifies. Yes, it does. It simplifies into two square root of 15. So we have two square root of six plus six times two square root of 15 minus four minus 12 square root of 10. So if I multiply these, I get 12 square root of 15, and nothing is a like term. This doesn't have a radical, and these all have radicals, but none of those radicals match. So this is the final answer here. Now let's try this problem. So FOIL first, right? Outside with outside, that's 40. Inside with inside, that's 10. Outside with outside, negative 56. Inside with inside, I get four. Now move on to the next term. So outside with outside, I get negative 30. Inside times inside, 25. Outside times outside, positive 42. Inside times inside, I get 10. Now we simplify. This does not simplify, so 40 square root of 10. This is 56 times two. This is 30 times five, and this is 42 times square root of 10. So let me see, 56 times two is going to be 112. 30 times five, I should have known, is 150. And then 42 square root of 10. Here I do have like terms. I have 40 and plus 42 square root of 10s. So that gives me 82 square root of 10s. And then I have negative 112 minus 150 which gives me negative 262, okay? So this would be the final answer there. Another way you could have written that is you could have put the negative 262 in the front and the positive 82 squared to 10 in the back. Both of these are acceptable as answers. Okay. We'll stop the recording here and then I'll continue in the next video.